a fantasy based on reality. This was the first line shown in a trailer in 2006. Fabula Nova Crystallis was the collective of games that would usher in a new era of Final Fantasy to the next generation of consoles in 2006. Sharing themes and mythology, these were the titles chosen to bring in a new generation of players into the world of Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy XIII vs. XIII and Agito Final Fantasy, later rebranded as Reishki or Type-0 as it came to be known in the West, were the constituents of this collective. Final Fantasy XIII launched in 2009 in Japan, the first of the collective to release worldwide and met with mixed reviews and a love-hate relationship with the fans. As hopes waned from Versus 13 ever releasing, with little to no information releasing at times, the development team went silent for a while, until, at last, at E3 2013, a new trailer burst into action with the revelation of the 15th coming. This People were hyped, but skeptical. Had this been the same game they've seen on previous outings of scant gameplay footage from other events? Is this a brand new title, or is it just reusing assets from Versus? After much speculation and fear of being just another 13 waiting to happen, the decade's wait is finally over, and Final Fantasy XV has been released to the world, becoming the fastest and best-selling Final Fantasy title ever in its first week. It sort of feels like a dream sometimes. Like waiting for that Final Fantasy VII remake from the tech demo back in 2006. That's now going to see the light of day, but left us with a bad taste in our mouths. After so many betrayals by the company synonymous with the term JRPG. Hello YouTube, I'm Zeldrak, and this is my review for Final Fantasy XV on Xbox One and PlayStation 4. Let me preface this by saying that if you want to play the game and enjoy the story to its fullest, I highly suggest you watch Kingsglaive first. It's a pretty solid prologue to the game and it helps you string together some stuff from the beginning, as well as flesh out some characters before heading into your journey. Final Fantasy XV tells the story of Prince Noctis, in his quest to reclaim his throne of the Kingdom of Lucis from the Empire of Niflheim, which has occupied the city of Insomnia after a failed peace negotiation between the two nations. The main theme of the game centers around unity and camaraderie, and portrays Noctis' adventure as a coming-of-age story, except he's much older than a ten-year-old going through the world. The premise of traveling to meet and marry Lunafreya as the moving force of the main plotline is certainly of great importance to Noctis, as he carries the burden of cementing peace between nations. And with the death of his father, it leaves him wondering what it really is he's traveling for. Character building off of the relationship our characters have is probably one of the biggest selling points for me. Gladio is Noct's bodyguard, an elder brother figure that keeps him in check when things go south. Ignis is his caretaker, probably the most responsible and serious one of the group, as he is the driving force of the group, the tactician, and the brains of the operation. And then there's Prompto, the guy you have in your group of friends who thinks making puns all the time is funny and thinks himself the life of the party. He's Noctis' best friend, and as cheerful as he might look, he hides his insecurities under the guise of cheerfulness, only confiding to Noctis, and this vulnerable state, to me, truly cements their relationship and builds his character into something more than just a happy-go-lucky kid. All of the characters are equally interesting and well-developed, and their chemistry is just amazing to see. You get a genuine feel of relationship from the interactions throughout the game, and it is further enhanced by the skill of the voice actors, who did a decent job at portraying each character's feelings. Whether you're camping or walking around in a dungeon, or just cruising in your stylish car, these characters are your connection to this world, and through their eyes you get to experience a breadth of emotions and conflicts that make this a very genuine world they live in. The game is probably the most open-world Final Fantasy in recent memory. The world has a large variety of landscapes you can get immersed in and lose hours just exploring and doing side content. The game is pretty open in content until about the final third of the story, where it will sometimes restrict you from returning to the open world in place of a more linear narrative. Though it will never restrict you from going back to the open areas outright, as at many points you can simply opt to return to them. There is only one noticeable point of no return to be found throughout the game, which is right near the end, though I'd recommend playing through the story first before returning to the open world, as some side quests open up after you get to a certain point, and you get to have more optional content to complete afterwards. 
This is a game you can spend 100 hours easily just doing everything it gives you. From minigames to chocobo races, fishing, photography, cooking, camping, hunting, killing a fucking mountain. This is a world built with love and care by its developers, and it really shows the passion they had with it. Cities are packed with people and the architecture can go from very modern, like La Stalem, to the Venice-inspired labyrinthine streets of Altitia. The game features a day-night cycle with dynamic weather. Nothing is quite as fantastic as leaving your inn or camping spot and driving around the early morning fog followed by rain, or the sunset reflecting on pools of water as you're driving through the coast. Nighttime in the game is deadly and can be quite a challenge if you're up to the task. This is how the game brings out random encounters. Besides Imperial troops during daytime dropping from ships flying around the land, you get demons during the night which can be some of the most challenging fights early on. It's not fun returning from a side quest and having to defeat an Iron Giant 20 levels above you, also accompanied by 6 bombs. You can defeat them, but at the cost of many items and time. In the music department, Yoko Shimomura brings her amazing composition and musical expertise to both the movie and the game, creating a breathtaking orchestral soundtrack with some very impressive songs, only getting a bit cut short in sheer excellence by some of the Outpost and City songs, which are kind of a hit or miss in my opinion. Songs range from simple country instrumentals to piano and string-filled high-intensity orchestral compositions for the battle themes, and make up for some of the best compositions she has ever written. The music doesn't feel out of place in cutscenes, and it helps sell you into the world and immerse you in it. The soft piano compositions during emotional scenes or even some more tense string works for dungeons, giving off the feeling of an ease and mysteries to uncover beyond. I am a big fan of Shimomura's work. Of Xenoblade and Kingdom Hearts fame, she delivered some of the best battle theme work so far, rivaling my love for Xenoblade's mechanical rhythm as my all-time favorite theme from her repertoire. The battle system in this game is completely different from anything I've seen in previous Final Fantasy entries. It borrows a lot from what made Kingdom Hearts' battle system iconic, while also adding their own flair on the style, bringing it much closer to what Tetsuya Nomura originally envisioned to have, which was a similar feeling to the battle scene in the Final Fantasy VII movie Advent Children, which featured a lot of emphasis in fast-paced aerial combat, and I think the system achieves just that. It can become pretty chaotic sometimes, depending on the number of enemies and camera positioning, but the combat feels pretty good, and it's a much better system than Final Fantasy XIII's system ever was. It still allows for a lot of tactical thinking and positioning with the added wait mode, which lets you assign targets and plan your next move while freezing time, but you can forego wait mode entirely by playing it like an action game, dodge rolls, face shifting through your enemy's advances, and point warping to safety to warp strike a distant enemy for added damage or to just replenish your mana to keep the action going. Magic can be crafted by combining one or more of the three basic elements, fire, thunder and blizzard, and can be further customized with the addition of an item to get better or more varied results, such as dual cast or heal cast. Magic is much more environmental than targeted, and can be a detriment in closed spaces, as magic does affect everyone around it, including you and your party. It is also pretty powerful and useful, but must be used sparingly, and with much more thought into its use. Character progression is done through regular leveling, by gaining experience points through battling and completing side quests, and then can only be spent when sleeping at hotels or camping at the great outdoors. Each of the main characters has a skill unique to them that helps sell you into the whole road trip experience. Noctis has fishing, which lets you go to certain fishing spots on the map and play sort of a fishing minigame, where you can catch fish to use for cooking or selling for gill, and is surprisingly deep in its implementation, letting you choose a variety of different bait and line, and as you level the skill you get access to more and better rods to catch better fish. Ignis has cooking, making meals for the party when camping, and learning new recipes when you find new ingredients, or a new combination of them through eating at restaurants and diners scattered around the world. Gladio has survival, which progresses as you go along your daily battling and questing, finding items after a battle has occurred, and each time this skill levels up, he has a chance of fighting better items. And finally, Prompto, who acts as your travel photographer, is probably the least useful but more enjoyable features of the four, which is to take screenshots of you and your friends in action, or take pictures of plot points or cool scenery around the world. These pictures can then be saved and shared to Facebook and Twitter directly from the game's menu. Equipment is fairly standard, you get your weapons and accessories every character can equip, each of the main characters can equip up to 3 accessories by the end of the game, and while Noctis can use every weapon type, Gladio, Ignis and Prompto each can equip 2 different types of weapons. Gladio can equip greatswords and shields, Ignis can use daggers and spears, and Prompto uses guns and tools. 
All of them can also equip magic flasks, if you have crafted any spell beforehand. The game also has Ascension, something similar to the Crystarium or Sphere Grid from previous Final Fantasy games, where you can spend ability points to augment your skills in battle, gain new warp moves, or simply get more stats and accessory slots. Final Fantasy XV exceeds my initial expectations on what the game could be in terms of combat and exploration, and while the story still has some points that could use some more exposition to fully understand the events that unfold in the background, the movie and the promise of future free patches by Square to add to the story gives me a reason to go through it again in the future. Despite this, camera problems in battle and several issues I had with action prompts being on the same button as jumping gave way to many frustrating moments that could be avoided by just switching the action button to something else. I believe the issue might only be found in the Western releases of the game, as usually the circle button, or B, is the default in Japan. Overall, the game is a very thorough and enjoyable experience that stays true to the Final Fantasy name and mythos, while infusing it with new and interesting mechanics and experiences. With that said, I give Final Fantasy XV a diamond medal. It is very fun and an amazing experience, which pulled me in from the first few moments and I could barely put the controller down each time I played. Despite the minor issues I had with the game, it is the most fun I've had with the Final Fantasy game in years, and we'll come back to it for the future DLC. This has been my review of Final Fantasy XV. If you enjoyed it, please consider leaving a like and perhaps subscribing to the channel. I release a video every Saturday. If you have any thoughts on the game, leave a comment below. This has been Zeldrek, and I'll see you next time.